claimed that Diddy groped his <laughs> touched his butt. He believes that Diddy was <laughs> to have uh, He says that Diddy downplayed it just like he, as a joke, like, oh, we just playing around. Um, just horse would, playing. Yeah. In terms of allegations of celebrities, we're talking about Cuba Gooding Jr. being shown through still photos of what the complainant says they have videos of, of being him. So, just when you thought the P. Diddy drama had simmered down, bam, more lawsuits come flying his way. And this time, it's not about a woman, but a man. And the worst thing is that it's not just Diddy in the hot seat this time. Nope, there's a whole crew of big names getting dragged into this mess, and they're not being called victims. They're being labeled as partners in crime. We're talking A-listers like Cuba Gooding Jr., Meek Mill, Young Miami, Stevie J, Usher, Chris Brown, and even Diddy's own son, Justin Combs. Now, it's been crickets from these co-conspirators since the lawsuit bomb dropped, but rumor has it that one of them is fuming mad right now and that someone is supposedly Cuba Gooding Jr. And honestly, can you blame the man? The guy's been laying low dealing with his own lawsuit drama, and now his name's being dragged through the mud again? It's like his reputation's been taking a nosedive and being looped into this mess isn't doing him any favors. Word on the street is Cuba's firing off some pretty harsh warnings to Diddy, accusing him of exposing him as his so-called gay dog. And let me tell you, if these rumors are true, it could spell major trouble for the whole crew. Guys, it's a wild ride, but let's buckle up and dive into the details. So there's this whole chatter about Diddy and his supposed weird friend zone, right? People are scratching their heads, wondering why on earth Cuba Gooding Jr.'s name popped up in the co-conspirator list. But it turns out these two might be tighter than we've ever imagined. Like they could be best buds for all we know, hitting up parties and maybe even getting into some mischief together. Now, if you're not up to speed, let me fill you in. There's a brand spanking new chapter unfolding in the Diddy saga, and it's looking like the end of his empire might be looming, and not in a good way. We're talking about some serious heavy stuff that could potentially slam the door shut on Diddy's career and send him straight to the slammer. And guess what? That's exactly what's heading his way in this latest lawsuit. But before before this, something happened. Just when Diddy thought he could wiggle his way out of trouble, he pulls a last-ditch legal maneuver, trying to discredit one of the accusers and practically begging the judge to throw the whole case out. And he even tries to play the victim card, crying foul about cancel culture. But before the judge could even raise an eyebrow at his antics, another lawsuit blindsides him, making it his fifth legal tango since November. This lawsuit is no joke. We're talking a whopping 70 pages of pure legal drama. And it's not for the faint of heart because it dives into some seriously disturbing allegations against Diddy. The accuser? Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr., a producer who apparently worked on Diddy's latest album, the love album, Off the Grid. Jones also claims that the 54-year-old music mogul tried to G him into accepting a homo relationship, alleging that this kind of thing is all too common in the music industry. We're just scratching the surface here and there's plenty more juicy details where that came from. But before we dive into all of that, remember how we mentioned Cuba Gooding Jr. being dragged into this mess? Well, here's the scoop. According to the legal docs that TMZ managed to get their hands on, Jones believes that Diddy was pulling some shady moves with the intention of passing him off to other folks. And get this, he claims that Diddy introduced him to Cuba on his swanky yacht. And let's just say things took a nosedive into uncomfortable territory real quick. Allegedly, Cuba started making unwanted moves on Jones, totally crossing the line until Jones had to push him away. Jones even tossed in a pic of Cuba, hugging him as supposed evidence. Mr. Combs had dominion and control over the actions of Cuba Gooding Jr. and failed to step in and stop Cuba Gooding Jr. from essaying Mr. Jones, the suit alleges. Now, we all know Cuba's been down this road before. Back in 2019, a bunch of women came forward with some seriously sketchy claims about his behavior. But this is the first time he's dealing with accusations from another guy. In June 2019, things got seriously messy for Cuba Gooding Jr. The dude found himself in hot water after an incident at a Times Square bar where he was accused of getting a little too handsy with a woman. But hold on, the legal roller coaster was far from over. Another charge was thrown his way, but Cuba managed to dodge the jail cell by striking up a plea deal. Fast forward to now, thanks to the Adult Survivors Act, which is the same law that allowed Cassie to sue Diddy last November, two alleged victims of Cuba have come forward with a fresh lawsuit. In this lawsuit from 2018, which the Times got their hands on, a woman claimed that while she was working as a cocktail waitress at Lavo restaurant and nightclub in New York, Gooding forced his tongue 
tongue into her mouth without her consent. Gooding ended up pleading guilty to a criminal forcible touching charge related to the incident. And get this, the lawsuit filed just recently includes a chunk of the transcript from Gooding's testimony during that whole legal mess. When the judge asked him to describe what went down, he straight up admitted, I kissed the waitress on her lips and confirmed that he did it without her permission. In the 2019 filing, Kelsey Harbert spilled the tea, claiming she approached Gooding at the Magic Hour rooftop bar and lounge, hoping to meet the actor. But things took a dark turn when she ended up sitting next to Gooding's girlfriend. Harbert alleged that Gooding, being the total boundary crosser, reached over and decided to get handsy in all the wrong places. She described feeling shocked as she suddenly felt his hand groping her breast, treating her like she was nothing more than a piece of meat. Harbert wasted no time and filed a police report within a week of the incident. And guess what? Gooding ended up pleading guilty once again. The video appears to show Gooding putting his hand on her thigh. A few seconds later, his hand appearing to move up towards her Gooding is then seen pulling her hands to his lips. Now, fast forward to the civil lawsuit, where Gooding straight up confirmed that it was indeed non-consensual physical contact during his hearing. Both women involved are seeking some serious damages for A and battery, lost wages, and the emotional, mental, and physical toll this whole mess took on them. Oh, and let's not forget about those attorneys' fees. As for Gooding's camp, they've been pretty tight-lipped about the whole ordeal, with no immediate response to the media's inquiries. Gloria Allred, who's representing the two plaintiffs, isn't holding back. In a statement, she made it clear that her clients aren't backing down. They're seeking the justice they couldn't quite nab in the criminal case, and they're not stopping until they get it. So yeah, Cuba has definitely got a whole plateful of legal drama to deal with. Maybe that's why the rumor mill's spinning about him gearing up to defend himself against this fresh lawsuit from Jones. Because let's be real, if these rumors hold any truth, it could spell disaster for Cuba's reputation. Now, let's shift focus back to the lawsuit. Jones dropped the bomb on February 26th in a New York federal court, and according to Jones, he was practically living in Diddy's shadow for over a year, from September 2022 to November 2023. And if you take a peek at his Instagram, it looks like he's got the receipts. There's even a video of them pumping iron, probably on Diddy's yacht, back in early 2023. Now, in his lawsuit, Jones claims he caught a ton of video and audio of Diddy, his A-list pals, and his staff getting into some seriously shady business during their hangouts. According to some juicy court docs snagged by Billboard, this Lil Rod Jones Jr. dude is dropping some serious bombs on Diddy. I'm talking about allegations of inappropriate touching without consent and some seriously sketchy attempts to rope him into these rumored foes with other guys. And get this, Diddy supposedly promised Jones a Grammy for his production work if he, and I quote, taste the rainbow, if you know what I mean. Among the laundry list of accusations is Diddy allegedly strong-arming Jones into arranging encounters with SEX workers and pressuring him into participating in some seriously unwanted bedroom activities, not just with these workers, but with others too. And if that's not enough to make your jaw hit the floor, get this, Diddy supposedly served up spiked drinks to unsuspecting guests at his swanky parties. According to the lawsuit, there are even screenshots supposedly showing gatherings at Diddy's digs that included underage girls and more SEX workers. And get this, some of these ladies allegedly had their drinks tampered with at Diddy's direction. But wait, there's more. This legal bombshell isn't just aimed at Diddy, it's also calling out some big names in the industry. We're talking about Diddy's right-hand woman, Christina Corum, Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian Grange, and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia Habtamarium, they're all caught up in this legal whirlwind. Jones says in the lawsuit that Grange, Habtamarium, Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group effectively worked together with Combs in a RICO enterprise that failed to adequately monitor, warn, or supervise the actions of Combs, his son, and his chief of staff. A RICO enterprise is any individuals or groups that act together to violate violate the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. And get this, Jones isn't just looking for a slap on the wrist here, he's aiming high, seeking a cool $30 million in damages. Now Justin Combs and his legal team are firing back at these wild accusations with full force. According to a statement from his reps, Justin is flat out denying all of these absurd allegations, calling them nothing but a desperate attempt for a quick cash grab. They are all lies. This is a clear example of a desperate person taking desperate measures in hopes of a payday, the statement said. There will be legal consequences for all defamatory statements made about the Combs family. Also, an attorney for Combs is slamming Jones' claims as pure fiction, straight up calling them out as a cheap ploy to grab headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones' attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored, as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. The attorney, Sean 
John Hawley said in a statement, We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. Now, according to Jones' lawsuit, he claims that back in August 2022, Diddy himself reached out to him to produce some tunes for the R&B album. The Love album, Off the Grid, which ended up snagging a Grammy nomination after its release in September 2023. But here's the kicker. Jones says his life took a nosedive after he agreed to work with Diddy. Jones alleges that Combs' SCX harassed and aid him while he lived with him at Combs Homes in Florida, Los Angeles and New York, as well as on a yacht Combs rented in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The harassment in A included constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his A, according to the lawsuit. Jones says he was forced to work in Combs' bathroom as Combs showered Nick in a glass enclosure. When he tried to raise the alarm about Diddy's behavior to Christina Corum, Diddy's right-hand woman, Jones claims she brushed it off as just friendly horseplay, stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. The lawsuit accuses Coram of aiding and abetting Combs' essay of Jones and of working with Combs to G-word him into accepting a homo relationship. Jones also alleges that he was forced to solicit SEX workers and perform SEX acts with them to please Combs. To aid in the alleged recruitment, Jones said, Combs provided him with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to a Miami establishment as a signal to any SEX worker he approached that Combs was in town and had sent Jones to recruit them. Jones alleges Combs, whom he describes in the suit as forceful and demanding, and someone who does not take no for an answer, leveraged his power as one of the most influential people in hip-hop and business to intimidate him, including by threatening to inflict bodily harm if Jones did not comply with his demands. On one occasion, Jones alleges, Combs forced him to watch as he displayed guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. In a separate incident, Jones alleges, Combs shared that he was responsible for a shooting in a nightclub in New York City in 1999 with the rapper Shine, born Jamal Barrow. A jury acquitted Combs of gun possession and bribery charges in connection with that incident, while Barrow was sentenced to 10 years in jail. Jones was terrified of Combs and felt he could not tell him no, according to the suit. Mr. Combs consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement, the lawsuit says. Jones says in the lawsuit that he has video and audio evidence to support some of the allegations. The lawsuit says that Combs required Jones to record him constantly, and that on several occasions Combs took Jones's cell phone to record himself. As a result, Jones alleges he has hundreds of hours of video and audio records of Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Jones says in the suit that he believes Combs also drugged him on February 2, 2023. He alleges he woke up dizzy and confused in bed with Combs and two SEX workers. In response to a request for comment, Jones' attorney Tyrone Blackburn used a Latin phrase, res ipsa loquitur, which loosely translates as the thing speaks for itself, referring to the lawsuit. Jones says in the suit that he was under an implied work-for-hire agreement and was not compensated for the songs he produced on The Love Album. As a result, the lawsuit says, Combs, Love Records, Motown Records, and Universal Music Group were all unjustly enriched at his expense. Guys, seriously, this lawsuit is off the charts. As we all know that before now, Diddy has been sued by four women who have accused him of S.A. Cassie, whose legal name is Cassandra Ventura, said Combs physically a at her and forced her to have SEX with male prostitutes while he got off on it and recorded the encounters. The lawsuit was settled the day after it was filed. The settlement was in no way an admission of wrongdoing, Combs lawyer Ben Braffman has said. Following Cassie's lawsuit, two other women, Liza Gardner and Joey Dickerson Neal, have alleged in lawsuits that Combs S. aid them. And a woman identified as Jane Doe in court documents said Combs and two other men R. worded her when she was 17 and Combs was 34. Those three cases against Combs are still pending. In a statement in December, he denied the allegations saying enough is enough and called the claims against him sickening. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth, he said in the statement. Guys, this is crazy. The accusations flying around could seriously dent Diddy's legacy and his whole business empire. I mean, after Ventura dropped her bombshell lawsuit, three of Diddy's former artists came out in support of her. And that's not all. Around the same time, Diddy stepped down from his chairman position at Revolt TV. Then, in December, Hulu pulled the plug on a reality show that was supposed to be all about Diddy's family. And if that's not enough drama for you, in January, 
Diddy settled his lawsuit with Dia Gio, where he was accusing them of racism. But hold on to your seats, folks, because we're about to dive into the other big names caught up in this legal tornado. First up, we've got Young Miami. Jones is dropping bombshells left and right, claiming he's got solid evidence of some seriously shady stuff going down. He alleges that Young Miami's cousin or assistant, whoever it may be, made unwanted advances towards him. According to Jones, things went down on Thanksgiving Day back in 2022 while he was chilling with Diddy, Young Miami, and her crew. Apparently, this cousin of Young Miami barged into the bathroom while Jones was doing his business, and things quickly escalated into some inappropriate touching. Jones tried to push her away, but it didn't end there. Allegedly, she then tried to get frisky right in front of Diddy and the gang. And that's not all. Jones claims Young Miami was among those getting paid by Diddy for some, uh, extra services. Fast forward to September 2022, and there's more drama unfolding at Chalice Recording Studio in LA. Jones alleges a friend of Diddy's son Justin got shot, and he was right there, just two feet away from the chaos. When Diddy and Justin emerged from the restroom, Jones says he saw the guy suffering from gunshot wounds. But here's the kicker. Jones claims Diddy forced him to lie to the cops about the whole thing, spinning a tale about it being a drive-by. Now Diddy's camp isn't having any of it. They're slamming these allegations as outright lies from a desperate person. They're even gearing up to take legal action against anyone spreading defamatory statements about the Combs family. But the drama doesn't stop there. Stevie J, the Grammy-winning producer from Bad Boy Records, also finds himself smack dab in the middle of these allegations from Jones. According to Jones, Diddy used Stevie J's admiration as part of some G-word process, aiming to ease Jones' anxieties about his SEX preference. Allegedly, Diddy even showed Jones footage that he claimed was Stevie J getting cozy with another man. But hold on a sec, turns out those screenshots weren't exactly what they seemed. Adult film star Knockout stepped up on Twitter straight up saying, it's me, throwing a wrench in the whole thing, and Stevie J isn't staying silent either. He's got his lawyer in the game, ready to handle this mess. But wait, there's more. Academics, the hip-hop commentator, dug up some juicy details from the lawsuit. It alleges that Diddy had some intimate relations with a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj and an R&B singer who performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Now, the footnotes in the lawsuit got tongues wagging, suggesting these mystery celebs could be none other than Meek Mill and Usher. While it's all still up in the air, folks are definitely connecting the dots here. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sex intercourse with a rapper. Five, that's redacted. Look, five, he's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. And then the next person, R&B singer, six, redacted. Look, he performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Usher! Now, Jones isn't the first guy to call out Diddy's shady dealings. There's been whispers from other big shots in the industry, too. Let's start with actor and choreographer Columbus Short, who recently shared a video claiming Diddy tried to get him to come to his hotel room at 3 a.m. In a video, he straight up said Diddy tried to pull him into a late-night hotel room situation. At 3 a.m., Columbus ain't keeping quiet about it either. He's like, I'm snitching, I'm snitching in the kitchen. Columbus shared the story, saying he got a random call from Diddy in the middle of the night when he was still married. Diddy was all, why weren't you at the BET Awards? Columbus, being a married man and all, was like, uh, I'm in bed with my wife, man. Diddy, unfazed, dropped the bomb that he was at the Beverly Hills Hotel, just chilling solo. Now, props to Columbus for speaking up, but can we please retire the word snitch, especially when it's about reporting serious stuff like SA? It's not snitching, it's being a decent human and doing your civic duty. We need more people calling out bad behavior, not turning a blind eye. Then there's Usher. Back in the 90s, Diddy ran this thing called Puffy Flavor Camp. It was like a crash course for young stars to get some mentorship from the man himself. And let me tell you, the stories these celebs have spilled about their time in Puffy Flavor Camp are just wild. Usher, the R&B sensation we all know, spilled the beans in 2016. He told Howard that he really got a taste of fame after spending a year living with Puff Daddy when he was just 14. Picture it, young Usher wowing L.A. Reid with his musical skills, and bam, he's jetting off to New York to crash with Puffy during the golden era of Bad Boy Records. All in the name of getting the real deal scoop on making it big in the music scene. I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it, Usher said during his first Stern Show interview. It was pretty wild. It was crazy, Usher said, while rattling off some of the biggest names in hip-hop who were a constant presence at Puffy's house, including Notorious Big, Lil' Kim, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, and Craig Mack. I was like the little brother. They called me Baby Boo, Usher spilled. 
Also, there's Sway Lee, who took a trip to the Bahamas with Diddy a few years back. And then there's Justin Bieber, who apparently had some fear vibes going on whenever Diddy was around. Guys, this situation is an absolute dumpster fire. Seriously, it's like a never-ending downward spiral. And let's be real, Diddy and his supposed cruise careers and rep are totally tarnished, like beyond repair. It's like they've crossed a line that they can never come back from, you know? As this whole mess keeps unraveling, it's gonna be interesting to see if the music world actually steps up and starts taking some real accountability. But hey, I wanna hear what you all think about this chaos. So drop your thoughts in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.